Hello, this is Mr. Stansberry. I'm going to take you through the 18 C notes on least squares regression. Uh, at the end of this, you should be able to say um, that you are able to find and interpret the line of best fit for a given set of data. Okay, so uh, we just have one example to look at, and this is example number four from page 589. And there's some uh, data on um, frost on cherry data from previously in the chapter. Um, anyway, what we want to do, here's all the data that they give us, and it says define the role of each variable and produce an appropriate scatter plot. Okay, so uh, the each variable, so um, they already tell us we've got that the cherry frost is X and that the cherry yield is um, Y. Okay, so the, if you'll remember, oops, let's get a color that works here, so um, X is the independent variable. Right, that's what we get to control. And that is, in this case, the um, frosts. Right, and then Y is the um, dependent variable. Ooh, that's not very good handwriting. Sorry, dependent. Still not very good, but hopefully you can read it. Variable. And in this case, that's the cherry yield. Cherry yield. All right. So that's A. We'd find the role of each variable and produce an appropriate scatter plot. So let's make a little uh, scatter plot for this thing. Um, I'm going to get rid of that so that we can make a nice little scatter plot with the space that we have here. So, all right, so let's make the X here on this one. This is the frosts. And then this is the cherry yield. And this is in tons. All right, so the number of frosts needs to go up to basically from 0 to, it looks like 37 is the most. So let's do this. Let's do 20, 40, that'll be 30, that'll be 10. And then maybe to make it a little bit easier, we'll put fives in between there. Okay, so there's our frost. And then our cherry yield needs to be, it looks like, let's go from it doesn't even go down to 1, it goes into 3.1. Then we'll just start at 0 and go up to, say, 7.2. So we'll make this up to, say, 8. So again, we can chop that in half, call this 4. There's 6, 8, and then let's call this 2. All right. So now we just want to uh, graph the data here. So we got 27. And 5.6, so there's about 27, and let's see, there's 6, so we'll call that about right there. 23 and 4.8. 23, 4.8, we'll call that about there. 7 and 3.1. That looks pretty good. 37 and 7.2. Um, let's see, 32 and 6.1, 14 and 3.7, and then 16 and 3.8. Okay, so it looks like that somewhat follows a um, straightish line. Okay, so we're going to use the method of least squares to determine the equation of the line of best fit. So that's going to be part B. So this was the end of A. Um, so now we're going to go on to um, try part B. All right. So let's do that. So to use the method of least squares to determine the equation of the line of best fit is exactly what we were doing with our uh, calculator before. All right. So uh, again, getting a little tired of staring at myself so ooh, bubbles let's look at some bubbles for a little bit 
Um, let's turn on our graphing calculator and let's enter our data. So turn this thing on. Stat. We're going to edit again. It's the same exact process that we were going through the last couple of days, the last couple sets of notes. All right. So clear that out. Clear this one out, and let's enter in our data. So we have 2.7, not 2.7, but 27. So let's clear that out. Here, I think we can just enter, re-enter it. 27. There we go. Uh, 23, 7, 37. So again, we just got to enter all this data. The top line here all goes into the x, the list one, which is our x column, right? And 32 and 14 and 16. All right, and now we're going to go over to list two and enter in all this data. So there's our 5 .6, 4.8, 3.1, 7.2, 6.1, 3.7, and 3.8. All right. And now we're going to want to find our linear regression. So we're going to go over back into stat and over to calculate. And linear regression, push enter, and then enter again. And our equation would be y equals 0.13, maybe it's 138x um, plus 1.83.1 so let's see, we got y equals 0.138. Oh wait, I think that was, is that right? That doesn't look right. 0.138, not 1.38. 0 0.138x plus, and we had 1.83. Okay. So there's our least squares line. Uh, least We're using the method of least squares, which is what we just did again, to determine the equation of the line of best fit. So we did that. So give an interpretation of the slope and the vertical intercept of this line. So the slope is this here. So 0.138x um, is our slope. So what does the slope mean? That uh, So let's go with the slope indicates that every frost increases yield by 0.138 tons. So every time you have one more frost, every, every frost increases it by 0.138 tons. That's what the slope is, because again, it's rise over run, right? And so that's the cherry yield, 0.138 more tons for every frost that we have. Okay, so that's C. Instead of writing that all down, we'll just, you know, maybe I'll pause it and write it down. Let's try that. Okay, so uh, here we go. So the slope indicates that every frost increases the, that should say cherry yield, by 0.138 tons. Okay? So, um, let's go on to D then. It says use the equation of the least squares line to predict the chair yield if 29 frosts were recorded. So, now we're going to predict with 29. So, again, we have our equation, which is, I wrote it down here, it's y equals 0 0.138. That is a 3, but not a good one. There we go. 138x plus 1.83. Okay, so there's our equation of our, um, there's our best fit line. And now we're going to want to know if there's 29 frosts. So again, frosts, if you look up here, frost is our x. So we're just going to plug 29 in for x and see what we get. So we get y equals 0 0.138 times 29 plus 1.83. All right, so let's use our graphing calculator for that, or just any old calculator really will work for that. So we do 0 0.138 times 29 plus 1.83, and we get 5.832 tons. 5.8 three two tons so we would expect if we had 29 frosts you'd get 5.83 tons all right 
And then the last question says, use the equation of least squares line to predict the chair yield if one frost was recorded. So let's do that one right here next to it. So we'll do that with one frost. So really, we have y equals 0 0.138 times 1 plus 1.83. Right? So if we get our graphic calculator back out, let's try that again. 0 0.138 times 1, which isn't going to change anything, right? Uh, plus 1.83. All right, and we get 1.968. Okay, and that's tons as well. Okay, um, one thing I forgot to do on D that we want to do on D and E is this comment on the reasonableness of this prediction. So we have 5.832 tons off of 29 frosts here. So um, 29 would fit in this um, range here, and then the 5.8. Three. Let's see. That looks like that fits in this set of data here too. So this is the reasonable. Um, this falls into the data range, so we consider this reasonable. So um, falls into data range. So it is reasonable. Okay, and on this one over here, if you'll notice, the one actually is too small. The smallest we have for the number of frosts is seven, and then the smallest tons is 3.1, and that doesn't fit into either data range, so um, it does not fall into data range. What is that? What am I writing there? I can't even read that. There we go. Does not. fall into data range. So it is not reasonable. Okay. So um, that's really all there is for this. So you should now be able to say that, uh, that I'm able to find and interpret the line of best fit for a given set of data. Okay, And you were able to tell what the slope was. And we can talk about if it's reasonable or not. So this is a good section to kind of help tie this stuff together. Okay, If you have any questions, please ask. Thanks.